Welcome to the Tiffany Micah podcast. What we do here is build the strength and courage in you to accomplish your big dreams and goals in your sport. No longer will you feel limited. You won't feel you're not good enough. You won't question whether you will make it. Those doubts will disappear because you will have the competitive edge over your opponents and leave them in your wake. And the bonus is others will notice. Listen up and take notes because I will show you exactly how to do it. Hey there, Tiff here from the Tiffany Micah podcast. Hope you are going strong, you're crushing it in your training and uh, thanks for coming back and, and joining me today. Now we can get quite complacent being in lockdown because this is what I want to talk to you about today is some really essential things that we can be working on and in this lockdown series striving in lockdown we want to be striving not diving. Okay. So we don't want to get caught up in everything, um, that's going on around us. I want you to be focused on what you've got to do. Okay. We're all about getting ourselves ready and prepared for that time that we're going to get out and compete again. Uh, and, 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 and look, that's what I want you to be focusing on. And if you've been going through the successful athlete masterclass, uh, We've been looking at the technical skills in your sport, what's working, identify what's missing. And we're also doing that the same with your, with your mental skills. We're looking at what's working and what's not working. And you could say, oh yeah, Tiff, but you know, like I'm not competing right now, so I don't need to do it. This is definitely the time that you should be working on all of this. You've been given that, um, like a a semi holiday semi break because of the covid-19 well you know what take advantage of it because you can really hone in and really get some technical skills in place and you can also work on getting your mental skills in place because i want you to get prepared i want you to by the time everything's all back to some form of normality and you're ready to compete and ready to get out there and do that, I want you to be prepared, right? We've got to crush it when we compete. Don't just dilly-dally. Go, oh, yeah, she'll be right, Tiff. You know, I'll do it when when we get to um, get out there and compete again. Nuh-uh, nuh-uh. Do it now, okay? Do it now. This is why I'm talking about this striving in lockdown series is because I want you to get get yourself ready now. Now, if you haven't actually uh, signed up for the Successful Athlete Masterclass, it is free, free training videos. I send you a whole heap of content uh, to help you get yourself mentally prepared, identify what's working, identify what's not working, identify what you need to then focus on. So if you haven't yet signed up for that, go to the Tiffany, uh, go to tiffanymica.com forward slash Sam. That's as in S-A-M. So I look forward to seeing you there for that. So remember, it's free. So make sure you go and do that. But what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be talking to you about why I want you to be focusing on the skills in this Striving in Lockdown series. And the reason for that is, is like I've said before, we've got to get ourselves prepared. We've got to take this opportunity that, you know what, I've got a chance here to really get some areas in my game more refined, or I've got an opportunity here to really work on some weaknesses in my game that I can really improve. So by the time, you know, I'm back out there ready to compete again, I can bring it. Right. So that's how I want you to be thinking. So we're going to be focusing on the skills and there's always two most important areas you always, always, always have to be focusing on in your sport. One is technical skills. And the reason for that you should be working on your technical skills is because your your technique needs to be sound. 
I'm all about mechanical efficiency. So I've taught many sports over the years. I tend to teach more golf these days than anything else. And I can play virtually any sport. Can't do kickboxing though. I don't know if I'll do that one. But it's all about how my brain works is that, you know, we go through a process to learn and develop skills and we want to refine those skills so that they are something we can fall back on no matter what. So when you're in the heat of the moment and your head's going crazy, you have faith and trust in your skills. So you need to make sure that you're focusing on getting your skills in order. But the other thing that we have to be working on, the other most important area, because remember I said there was two, the other one, you've got to work on your mental skills. They actually work hand in hand. And if you're not working on your mental skills and you're like, oh, yeah, Tiff, yeah, yeah, you know, I'll get to that. Nah, get to it now. And it doesn't matter what level that you are in your sport. I don't care if you're just starting out. You've got to start working on your mental side right now. I don't care if you're, you know, topping your age group in your sport. You've got to keep working on your mental skills. It's always, you're always going to be working on your technique and refining it. You're always going to be working on your mental skills and refining those as well. And I want you to be thinking about it this way, how you approach your technical, your technical skills mentally will affect whether you will master your technical skills. Did you hear me say that? How your mental approach is to your technical skills will affect whether you master your technical skills. I want you to burn that deep into your brain. How your mental approach is to your mental skills will also affect whether you can master the mental side of your game. I hope you heard that. I'm going to say it again. How your mental approach is to your mental skills will also affect whether you can master your mental side of your game. Because if you haven't got those two things in place and you're not, and you are not working, especially on the mental side, that will always hold you back. You've heard me talk about in episodes about belief. What you believe comes true. Because it's your thoughts that create the results. That's how it is. So if you believe that you don't need to work on mental skills and you keep stuffing up, hello, there's a clue there for you. You've just got to be aware and get the feedback. So this is why I believe in lockdown, it's the perfect time that you can really focus on your technique. It's the perfect time that you can really focus on your mental skills. You're not competing now, so you don't have to worry about your performance and in any form, really. You should never be worrying about your performance. You should always be honing in on getting your technique right, honing in getting your mental skills right. There are other pillars to that. These are just two. These are the two most important ones. But you're not competing. So you have the opportunity to really refine these areas. Because what happens when you're in competition mode, you're frightened of trying new things. You're frightened of changing something. I remember when I was uh, learning to play golf, you know, and I wanted to play off scratch. And at the time, I was probably playing off about 18. I'd probably been playing for, I think it took me about 12 months to get to an 18 handicap from a beginner to an 18 handicap, something like that. And I remember when I when I took it up and I changed coaches and I was playing tournaments at the same time. And do you know what the coach did? Changed my swing three days before a tournament. Three days. So the first tournament that I played, uh, I played a few tournaments in that week. So the first in that first week of, of the changing of the golf swing. I uh, hooked everything. I hooked everything left into the trees. So a hook is, you know, like for a golf, like right-handed golfer, a hook is the ball goes left. So I hooked everything into the trees, the driver, the sw- off the tee, down the fairway. Thank goodness that I could just, uh, you know, my short game was okay and I could rely on that. I was relieved when I'd get to the green. It was a real mental battle because I was going through 
adjustments again. And then we went, well, then I went back home. We worked on my swing again. And the following week I went off and played tournaments. This is right through tournament time, right? And I sliced everything. So for right hand golf, everything goes right. So I was slicing these high drives over trees. I was going one to two fairways away from the hole. I'd always say to my, you know, the people that I was playing with, I'll see you down on the green. Because that's what it was like. It was a nightmare. It was living a nightmare, you know. But that's what I had to do at the time. But right now, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to go through that. You have to You have to take this opportunity of going, right, I'm not competing. What can I do to improve my game? And you may have limited practice in what you can do. because of the restrictions that you have. You may have that, but there's something, right? I don't want you to look at that as an excuse that, oh, you know, like, well, I can't, I can't look, Tiff, I can't practice because, um, well, you know, we've got restrictions on and I, no, there's something you can do. There's definitely something that you can do to help improve your technical part of your game, whatever it is. I want you to be creative. I want you to be thinking about, how can I find a way to improve my technique, even if I can't practice that? I want you to be thinking about that. And then if you're doing that with regards to your technique, then you can also be working on your mental skills because your mental skills will contribute to that because, again, it's your mental approach, isn't it? It's your mental approach to you working on your game or your sport or your running or your kickboxing, or your soccer playing, or your high jumping, or your marathon running, or your mountain bike riding, or your javelin throwing, whatever, whatever. The mental skills, if you work on those in your practice sessions, in your training That will also improve everything that you're working on technically, everything that you're working on mentally. You can be creative here. We've all had to be creative in our training. I love the gym. I love going to the gym. I've always trained. You know, I've played, I've been very competitive with sports since the age of seven. Always trained, always practiced. I love it. I live by it. It's how I start my day. Right, it's how I start a successful day is I train in the morning. I get up and I train in some form. And I love going to the gym. I love being at the gym. I love hanging. It's my happy place. But the gym's not open, is it? It's not open anywhere around the world, I don't think. So we, we've all had to make adjustments. So I've had to make adjustments too. So what I'm doing is I'm cycling a lot more. I'm doing a lot more um, creativity at home with with ab workouts and weight training and bands and all of that sort of stuff. I've been running on the oval. I haven't been able to run for a long time. I can start running again, which is great. Doing soccer, soccer skill work for footwork. I love it. I'm having a lot of fun doing that. But I've had to be creative. And this is why you need to be focused on that too. You need to be creative with how you're going to improve your technical part of your game, how you're going to improve the mental part of your game. And this is why I want you to be working on getting yourself ready. Perfect opportunity. Let's do it. So therefore what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you two challenges to work on from here. And I want you to be doing this for the next 30 days. So the first technique, uh, first technical, the first challenge that I am going to set for you is I want you to pick a technical skill in your sport that you are weak at. Something that you actually are avoiding because you know that you're not, you're not strong at that. You know that you're quite weak. You know that's a weak area and you know that you've got to focus on that and getting that right. So I want you to be, Picking that skill that you are weak at, the one that you are avoiding, 
And what I want you to do, it's so simple. What I want you to do is I just want you to work on it for 10 minutes each day. That's it. Only 10 minutes. Because I want you to be testing something over the next 30 days. So when you work on something for a short period of time, it teaches you to really hone in and focus on that sh- in that space of time. So what I want you to do is when you're working on that technical skill for 10 minutes, I want you to set the timer and that's all you're going to be focusing on just for 10 minutes. No, I'm saying 10 minutes. That's it. I want you to be highly focused in that 10 minute period. Okay. The second challenge I've got for you is I want you to pick a mental skill that you're weak at. One, again, that you're avoiding. I know there's plenty of things like that come up that we put pressure on ourselves, especially in coping with emotions. Surely there's something around there that you can pick up. And what I want you to do there is I want you to, again, focus on how you're going to improve that mental skill for 10 minutes each day. If you're not sure on on how to approach that, reach out to me, send me an email, tiff at tiffany-mica.com. Ask me, ask me the question, Tiff, I really want to work on this area in my mental skills for 10 minutes each day. I just don't know how to approach it. What should I do? Ask me. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to you ask questions. I'm here to help you crush it when you compete. I'm here to help you bring out your best performances when you compete because I know how to do that. So remember, challenge one is to pick a technical skill that you are weak or that you avoid, work on it for 10 minutes each day. Challenge two is to pick a mental skill that you are weak at or that you avoid. And you have to work on that for 10 minutes each day. And you know what I always say, 10 minutes out of 1,440 minutes in a day is nothing. But I want you to be highly focused when you're working on those specific challenges, okay? The third part of the challenge is, yes, we're going to do it for 30 days. And what I want you to do after that 30-day period, I want, you to, I want you to have some form of tracking in place that you can identify what the difference is between when you started and 30 days from now, what you've been highly focused working on your skills for, for 10 minutes a day, what the results that, that arrive in that time. Because 30 days, it's a month, things can change in a month. Only if you're very specific on what you're doing, okay? And I want to hear back from you what you have discovered after that 30 days. That's the challenge I'm going to set for you. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Love it if you could share with me what you like best about what you heard. If you've got friends that you know that would benefit from these episodes, love it too if you could share these episodes with your friends because we've got to build the successful athlete community as big as we possibly can because we're going to crush it when we compete, aren't we? Absolutely. So I want you to dream big, believe in you, go after your dreams. Take care. Talk soon. Would you like to be able to reach your potential? great this is what you need to do you can get a free copy of my book focus how to reach your potential in sport business and life all you need to do is go to tiffanymica.com forward slash free book get a free copy of focus how to reach your potential in sport business and life and i look forward to seeing you there dream big believe in you go after your dreams